In this session, we will briefly introduce some other advanced themes on clustering analysis. Uh, one important, interesting one called ensemble clustering. What is ensemble clustering? Ensemble clustering is trying to combine the results of many clustering models to create a more robust clustering. Since clustering is unsupervised, there is no single model or criterion may truly capture the optimal clustering. But if we can ensemble the models, it may provide a more robust solution. The general methodology is first we generate k different clusterings, or we call these are ensemble components. Then after that, we will combine those different results into a single and more robust clustering. So we'll first see how to generate these k different clusterings. Okay. Usually we can use a model based or data selection based. The model based means you generate use different models or different parameters. You may generate different components. That's just, you can select those ensemble components. The data selection means you can select data from different portions or different samples for the whole partition of the data. Then you can generate those ensemble components. Then we can combine them together. Now, how to combine those different ensemble components? Generally, there are two major proposals. One called hypergraph partitioning. That means you will consider each data point is a vertex, and a cluster actually in any ensemble components. You can think they are hyper edge. Then those data points will be uh, represented will be linked by many hyper edges. Then you can thinking this one is hypergraph. Then you do hypergraph partitioning. You may get those ensemble uh, finer robust clustering results. Another one called meta clustering. Meta clustering is a graph based approach, comparing to the typical point based those uh, graph based clustering. The vertices actually now is associated with each cluster in the ensemble components. Okay. So these are the typical approaches. For details, we will introduce some references. Then we will briefly outline how clustering is used for effective data mining. First, clustering is, can be used for data summarization. Why? Because clustering is based on similarity. Actually, this is a very natural form for summarization because summarization, the most natural way, is based on the notion of similarity. That's why when you cluster data, you essentially summarize the data. Then the second major effective data mining task clustering can contribute is outlier analysis. Actually, we can view these outliers anomalies are those data points that are far away from any particular cluster. That means we can first do clustering, and once we see there are some isolated data points, they are far away from any particular cluster, we will say those are the outliers. Then the third contribution the clustering can do is for classification. For classification, if we first pre-process data to get a clustering, we will reduce the number of data points the classifier should handle. Okay. And a typical one, for example, the clustering can speed up uh, k-nearest neighbor classification. For k-nearest neighbor, you try to find their neighbors, but sometimes you get too many data points. Then we can replace the data points with the centroid of fine green clusters belong to a particular class that simply says, if there are many, many data points, they all belong to positive class, we actually can find the clusters and we just use centroid to represent some fine grained centroid to represent the many data points if they belong to the same class. Okay. So that may effectively reduce the complexity and number of data points to handle in classification. And Clustering also popularly used for dimensionality reduction. 
in our lectures. In previous lectures, we already briefly introduced like spectral clustering, non-negative matrix factorization, probabilistic latent semantic indexing. Those are the typical dimensionality reduction method using clustering. Okay. Finally, clustering can be used for similarity search and indexing. Uh, clustering is based on notion of similarity. That's why we study similarity measure dissimilarity. If we can do hierarchical clustering, then we may create an indexing structure like CF trees. That will support similarity search and indexing effectively. Finally, we will discuss uh, clustering big data. So-called big data is data in a really, really large scale processing. Uh, you, you probably know the Hadoop, you know, MapReduce, there are many, many such uh, new methodologies to handle very big data. And one interesting one called Apache Spark. Uh, we have the pointer to their website. It's a fast and general engine for large scale processing. It is one of the most active projects on big data. So it has lots of contributors and lots of product deployments. It ha contains user-friendly and expressive APIs in Python, Java, Scalar, and R. Uh, it, it has for tolerant, fast in-memory and on-disk computation. It holds data in memory and provides fast accessing during iteration, and it contains some recovered node failures. And it has many feature-rich standard components for machine learning, graph computation, SQL and data frames, and stream processing. Uh, for clustering algorithms, it supports k-means, streaming k-means, power iteration clustering, Gaussian mixtures, latent digital allocation, and many more. So I provide some pointers. You may click there. You may uh, watch some MOOC videos to learn more about how to clustering uh, big data. Thank you.